by Nelson Mandela, who wrote this in the foreword of the World uh, Report on Violence and Health in 22, in 2002, meaning that this quote was said by Mandela almost 20, 10 years later, after we started our program in Cali. But the most important thing is going to the roots of violence. And that's the most important uh, thought from the public health perspective. Public health, I have to say this because in many other occasions people ask me questions about the difference between public health and medicine. <laughs> are completely different. We public health people, our, our patient is the community. As a doctor, you have a patient one by one. Our patient is the community as a whole to face different problems, violence, drugs, uh, early pregnancy, uh, alcohol consumption, drug trafficking, uh, air pollution, many problems that are for the community themselves. So that is our approach. Public health is an interdisciplinary and intersectoral uh, discipline that has to deal with differences. Uh, of course, we deal with diseases with this problem, but it, in this case, we're going to say the disease is violence. Mm -hmm. Take into account that that's the way we see it. So, so to put you in perspective, our city is located in the southwest of Colombia, southwest of Colombia, 120 kilometers from the Pacific coast. You know, Colombia has two coasts, Atlantic and Pacific coast. We got tropical climate, no seasons, no snow ever. <laughs> Only in the snow capy mountains, but not in the city, no city in Colombia receives snow any time of the year. 2.5 million inhabitants, mixed any group, mestizos, white, black, and indigenous people. And this is very important, take into account your question, sir. It's very important because the, the, the condition of the mixed population gives us the need to work with all these groups. In Cali, we are 2.5 million, almost 800,000 are black people. Mm -hmm. Have migrated from other parts of the country. In the, in the years of, 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 the Spani of the Spanish, we got, we got slaves there. Mm -hmm. Came from Africa, of course. Slavery was a problem in Colombia in those days, as uh, maybe you all know. Cali is a, is a city re, to receive migrants. Migrants for what? People looking for opportunity for job, education, whatever. But today, in the last 30 years, migrants from uh, displaced people from the uh, armed conflict and from uh, the paramilitaries and drug traffickers that chase people that do not agree with them or try to do something different they want. So, Migrants in the city is crucial. And this moment, today, we receive almost 200,000 200, Venezuelans mm -hmm. coming from this country to Colombia because of the situation there. You know, I'm not going to speak about that. But also, I, I, I highlighted the situation of the young population because of the problem that Mark has mentioned about the, the situation of young people here. I think it's important to know that our population, aged 10 to 25, is big. 30 to 35 years old. What kind of, of background information I want to tell you? Very high homicide rates, I already said that. Impunity and police corruption. I don't want to say that corruption for the police is everywhere. No, please, don't misunderstand me. Please don't understand me. Don't understand me. <laughs> and also, it, it leads to the issue of lack of effectiveness from the police work. Mm. Because that gives up the, the, the aggressors, the, the, the murderers, opportunity to hide or run away. Mm. In the 93, when we started this program with our common friend, Rodrigo Guerrero, which I pay tribute to him always, our uh, impunity rate was almost 90% impunity, meaning that only 10 murderers were taken to trial. That has declined today to about 60%. It's good, but it's still very bad. It's still very bad, very bad. Uh, the armed conflict, ah, narcotics trafficking. You 
all may know that in the Americas, the issue of nonprofit started as a huge problem mm -hmm. in the mid 80s. Unfortunately, my country is champion in this. It's a champion team that I want, I don't want ever. Colombia, Peru, and Bolivia have been the leaders in narco trafficking in South America, to the United States, to Mexico, Europe, everywhere in the world. And that's very well because these people do not respect life or anyone who is in their, in their way. Do not respect anyone. They have killed judges, journalists, mm -hmm. politicians, plain people. They have killed whoever is in their way. And they are still are killing others today. Mm -hmm. Armed conflict, we, I am happy to say that I totally agree with the peace agreement that President Santos made with the FARC guerrilla in 2016. Uh, but still, we got another guerrilla group. It's called ELN. Mm -hmm. They're still there and making very bad things. And a group of this armed conflict from the FARC are mm -hmm. nobody knows where they are, but maybe joining other other uh, mafia groups or whatever to drug traffic. Population has a high sense of insecurity, actually because, as Mark also mentioned about robbery and assaults and other situations that relate to the insecurity of the people in the cities. So that's other things. But also, there's an economic situation. The inequity that we live with is reflected in the Gini coefficient rate of 0.52 or 0.57. For those of you who don't know, Gini coefficient measures the gap between the richest and the poorest. If it's one, it's the worst situation. So it is complete inequality, full total inequality is close to zero, it's no inequality at all. As I, as I have read, the most equal country in the world is Finland, with about point, 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 uh, 18, point 18, which means that so far no country in the world is below point 0.1 in inequality fairness. And that makes the inflation that important because the, the situation of inequality is not the same as poverty. Mm. I want to stress that because poor people are blamed for being violent, for being people that you can trust, that are rude, bad things. But in terms of economical issues, it is inequality the most important thing, not being poor, being poor. Actually, in Colombia, one of the poorest areas in the country is the, is the area in which less crimes are committed. So it's not being poor that leads you to crime. It's inequality, another situation, lack of opportunities, and that kind of situation. So ah, in the city of Cali, you have here a photo that reflects some of the environment there. As I told you, many black people in our community. A special area called the District of Agua Blanca, in which many of the poor people live. It's a peripheral neighborhood with high level of poverty and inequality, of course high levels of violence, high risk areas for many situations like uh, uh, infrastructure, uh, sewage disposal, uh, that kind of situation. However, good news is that this community, this community has a very high reach of belonging to the community, despite this problem. They have a high, high feeling that they, involve, they live there and they want to do something for their own life have, a, have a, a very group, groups of art, music, dancing, and family life. You can see there in, you don't see here in, in England, in the UK, but people there in Colombia, in, as it says, it's a non-season country, you can see people in the streets, in the pavement, sitting there, talking, drinking beer sometimes, and enjoying life with other, their neighbors, their neighbors. Uh, there is a, there is a, let me, let me recall this anecdote. There is a film called uh, Good Afternoon Ramon, in which uh, a guy from Mexico tries to go to the United States. Three times failed, three times back to the United States. Finally, he managed to know somebody in Germany that is going to receive him in his house in Germany for better situation. He goes to Germany, but no one was receiving him. He lived in the street for three days, 
unfortunately, an old lady, not very old, but a lady, <laughs> uh, taking uh, Sanukin and taking home. And he lives in a building. And you know why this, 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 this film is called Good Afternoon? Because in that building in Germany live many old people, and they don't greet each other ever. But this guy from, from Mexico like to say every time, hello, 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 good afternoon, good morning, good afternoon, good day. So people in the building start greeting each other. And that's beauty. And I think in Colombia we have that. Every time in Colombia you go there, you will be in a handshake. Sometimes it's more than needed. Because I get a handshake to you now, and in 10 minutes or 15 minutes, again, and again, <laughs> and again. <laughs> I also read that for those that were spying in Britain years ago, when they were going to South America, one of the things they were taught, do not forget to handshake it, because they will know that you are a spy. <laughs> you, you know how to it in England. That's always a green color. <laughs> so starting with these ideas, but now I, later on we'll show some more, we start to focus on a program called Development, Security, and Peace. There's a paz, means desarrollo, seguridad, y paz. In Spanish, almost similar in English. Development, security, and peace. Program started with my friend, our friend, Rodrigo Guerrero, who was elected mayor in 93, no, 92 for the period, in those years, three years in, in, in office. He was a doctor, PhD, and also involved in public health. So when he was campaigning for his uh, mayor, Everybody told him, please do not include problem of violence. Do not include insecurity in your program because that will be very well for you. You will not succeed in that. Stormbully, he said, I will. I will, and I'm going to put a program in place. <clears throat> so I will explain a little more about, about uh, this, this, this program. But now, and I thank John and Jane and Mark because they all mentioned the need to have clear understanding of what prevention means. Um, actually, John spoke about primary, secondary, and tertiary prevention. Right, because you gave me more, more ideas to, to mention. So, uh, is a, is the, to avoid the occurrence of whatever event is supposed to be avoided. The most clear example for whoever is here is that vaccines. If you vaccinate your child in polio vaccine, never, never, at uh, the good doses, a good vaccine, never that child will suffer polio. Maybe he will swallow polio, but never suffer the disease. That's the main point of what's called primary prevention, to avoid a situation to be, now, early child development strategies to empower children for later life. In 96, I conducted research in my city, and this is practical. Conducted research in my city, we interviewed 50 homicides in jail, in prison, and compared their lifetime with other 50 men from the same neighborhood that the prisoners, the inmates, were, were uh, used to live when they were uh, caught. And the difference in their life stories is totally amazing. Those in prison, those murderers, didn't have a guidance in their early lives. They didn't receive true love. They didn't trust anybody. They were overwhelmed with the father over protection, mother over protection, many times father absent. But those who never committed a homicide, or never commit an assault, uh, a crime, receive love, receive guidance, receive a school and the family. So there are, and you can find plenty of, 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 of uh, documents and papers explaining the, how important is early child development. And to be honest with you, sometimes I think it's incredible mm -hmm. that today we have to say that, that love is important. That love is important. Who doesn't want love? Who doesn't want to be guided? And that's the crucial issue today, that we need to reinforce the speech about the need for guidance and love. I am not psychology, but I think psychology will be very uh, unhappy to hear that this is 
But we are calling for love. Come on. It seems to be unbelievable. They want to call for love. But fortunately, today, there are plenty of programs in the world. You mentioned Mark, the 1,000 days. Wonderful. There are, as far as I, 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 when I was in Pajo, WHO, I traveled to Latin America many times, and I found extraordinary programs on early child development. Brazil, Chile, Peru, Mexico, Jamaica, even in South Africa, I knew guys from South Africa that are running very interesting programs. I, I'm sorry if I don't know programs like this in, in the UK. Maybe there are, but I'm sorry if I don't know them. But that's crucial to know that uh, violence reduction starts when, he, when we, as children, I grow up um, in an environment that, get, that leads us to good life. But also have to go to school, of course. In a school. In the schools, people have to live experiences that don't lead them to violence. I don't think, please don't think I'm going to argue to, to answer my, 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 my request. But we who are here never have involved in crimes. Why? Because we were raised in that way for children. And completely sure that we are here have never received this kind of, uh, pro of, of uh, we did receive this type of, of, of education. Different, different levels, but uh, for sure. We don't commit a crime, not because we uh, fear of, uh, we are afraid of, of, of being punished. Well, that would be bad, but that's not the point. We have ethical commitments with our life. We have ethical uh, compromises with our own neighbors and friends and family. We don't commit crime, not because law says don't commit a crime. We don't need that. We don't commit crime because we think we can do that. Life is sacred for others and for us. So we have to respect that. That uh, I'm talking about uh, early child development. Very briefly, this graph taken from Jack Heckman. Jack Heckman uh, is a is a <coughs> U.S. Uh, economy laureate, Nobel laureate in economy. And he showed that the early reinvestment, meaning prenatal programs and targeted to early years, is uh, gives you a greater return later on in terms of economic, not only in terms of, of, of how you are going to be in life. But in, so those of you who think that we are wasting our money, investing in children, you are quite wrong. If we invest in children, the very best, the, 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 the earliest possible, will have better return on that investment later in life. Of course, we have returns at four or five school years or four school years, but the earlier we start, the better the return on that money. So it means that the, the, the 3.3 million pounds you are going to receive, some of that has to go to, to early child development for children. <laughs> and why is that? It has been proven also, I, there are a lot of evidence that childhood Chronic physical aggression leads to that, school failure, tobacco, blah, blah, blah. In the United States, where this program started in the late, uh, you will have different presentation, right? True? This presentation is, can be shared with you if you want. In the uh, late 70s, David Oz, in the United States, started a program called Home Visitation, mm -hmm. in which he did this kind of thing, visiting poor families in trouble to help them to raise their children. Many other programs in the United States have grown up with these ideas. Good to say that in the United States they managed to follow these, these children up to the age of 20, 25 years old. And these um, controlled these lives with the others who didn't receive this project, this program, the intervention and compare them, and the difference is overwhelming. Those who have been in a program for early child development, compared with those who haven't, do not get involved in drugs, do not get involved in crime, girls do not get pregnant early in life, and better to say, or later to say, when they got a job, they got more money, 
and they got more opportunities. So the difference is total. It's, it's, it's completely different when you receive this guidance that otherwise you will be in this trouble. And maybe, and I said before when I mentioned my, my study in Colombia was visiting killers in, 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 in prison, many of these have this problem in the early childhood. So it's a practical issue. Try to understand why a person gets involved in violence. Secondary prevention. Try to avoid further consequences of the harm done. In case of violence, for example, we have we are dealing with effective treatment and coaching for violence and drugs. We I will explain you later, but briefly, young people who are uh, at risk or involved already in guns by having committed a serious crime, we focus on them. So this secondary pressure is to avoid the further consequences of the, of the attitude, of the behavior. Domestic violence also is very important. I have many, many stories to tell, but <laughs> I can now. But women who suffer domestic violence and keep quiet, don't talk to anybody about their problem, will be repeated, uh, battered by their husbands. Women who start talking and speaking out of the problem will get help and will get support and will know how to get rid of that situation. I have many examples of that, but that, that's a practical situation. Have to speak out the problem. So to uh, get rid and, uh, and support uh, groups on, uh, of families and friends. I, with others, prepare this model to explain, maybe Mark, you you can discuss this, but why young people get involved in guns? And there is a kind of pathway, we could call it. And people with like conditions, mm. like of education, family characteristics in terms of uh, only one parent, mm. problem with, uh, with mother or father, uh, see brothers and sisters in, in, in not a a good uh, environment. So that's specific reasons for gun involvement. And there's a cost benefit for being gun, in Colombia at least, I don't know if here. But it's a cost benefit to be involved in a gang for them, because they got money. If, if there's narco trafficking, oh my goodness, it's terrible. I stop again now to another this. In Colombia, there are many stories, sad to say, sad to say, you want to take this pound of cocaine to the United States? I will. How so? Well, if I succeed, I will receive 20 million pesos that I will never receive in my life. If I'm caught, I will be in jail for five years. No worry for food, no worry for shelter, and I will learn English. <laughs> <laughs> it's happened today. So the issue of easy money it's crucial to understand the problem of, of violence in case of pro-related matters. So this gets to, to uh, involvement in guns and socialization in land in the streets, including drug use, and they need to fulfill obligations to remain in the gang. So that's a problem that we I face it in Colombia, Central America, United States, that uh, have uh, increasing the issue of. of, 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 of uh, of guns, in particular young guns. Tertiary prevention is to avoid the more and more negative consequences. For example, prison that are a prison fully convinced of their decision for a change their life. Mm -hmm. I don't know if in, in, like in, the, in the UK, but in Colombia for every 10 uh, inmates that are freed, about seven or eight go back to crime. Mm -hmm. Only two or three of them remain out of crime. Why? Because in prison is, is I mean, we call the, the, the school of crime, the prisons, because they are involved with other. Domestic violence receive women in particular, I emphasize that need to pay attention to domestic violence in whatever uh, violence prevention program is going to, to be done. Support and need forever a dangerous relationship. Another very quick uh, graph to explain the situation on guns. This is a two pyramids. One is 
white base, and another white at the top. So this is what I call the course of pathway of violence. Here we got the human group involved, family as economic environment that leads to being victims or witness of violence. The binary groups go into social trouble, hanging around, <laughs> minor offenses, thefts, fights, injuries, youth guns, race, robberies, injuries, homicides, organized crime, homicide, robberies, vans, etc., and drug trafficking. The good point is that many of these go out of this uh, scale, is of this uh, uh, pyramid, and you see the narrow, the, the pyramid is narrow because at the end there are less people involved in crime that in this in the base. So if we understand this situation, we can manage and make practical things for the, 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 the prevention strategy that all of us are interested in. Okay, now let's go in particular to the surpassing Cali. All of the what I said before has been applied in the in the in, in the program. So what is the situation in ninety three when Rodrigo took office? Citizens demanding action for the mayor to the, to the issue of violence and insecurity. This is not pointing out. Okay. No? No. Okay. Citizens demanding action from the mayor. Do something. Or they say, do nothing, because that would be very bad for you for your turn. But there was no clear idea in that moment what actions to take, and we have no allocated budget. Not at all. Zero pesos. No less like here. Need to build an intersectoral program. But understanding as also I think Mark and, and, and John mentioned, no single solution to the problem. There is no only one institution that can solve the problem. It has been proven. Although all the efforts the police and the judicial system has done in the world as a only institution, it's not possible for them to and it's not fair also to put everything on their shoulders. It's not fair because it's a problem of the society. So it's a problem of only one institution. So what we do, and this is another practical uh, uh, comment. Rodrigo invited experts for the variety of backgrounds, academicians, historians, epidemiologists, sociologists, to prepare a holistic approach proposal. It took us about three, four months, discussion, 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 reviewing information, reviewing documents, and see what, what to submit to the municipal council for budget. So the draft proposal was submitted in that year for approval and budget allocation. Later on, the president in that moment also knew about the project later on, and he uh, also allocated money from the president. That money is from the city of Cali. So what are the basic principles? Nothing new for you, I think. Nothing new. Violence is multi-causal. Mm -hmm. There is not only one cause of violence. So we need to have an intersectoral approach. Interventions should be evidence-based. You don't take uh, a medicine that has not been proven, <laughs> that's gone to research. Hopefully, in violence also, we have to do evidence-based uh, decisions. And, uh, and uh, I, went, I mentioned that because many people propose single things. Who is the who, who to blame? Problem ever the media, the media, media. Blame the media because the media speaks too much about that. No, blame the school, blame the family. But that's not correct. This is a, a multi-causal problem that has to be tackled in a multi-sectoral approach. Prevention is the priority. I don't think I need to go further in that. Community engagement, absolutely agree, totally agree with you. Community engagement is not. However. Community engagement has one important uh, experience in my case, in our case. We that uh, developed the program, that uh, made the program work, also were involved in the community themselves. I mean, it's no question that this guy knows what to do and send others to do that. No, we get involved with the community. And I think, I don't, maybe here you that too, but it's crucial that community, the young people know you and know that you are really interested in solving the problem because you are working with them, not working for them only, but working with them. And that has 
giving us a lot of, 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 of empathy in, 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 in the communities because they trust. Maybe John or, or Jay mentioned the need for trust. And that's very important to have people believe what that you are doing is right, that you are doing that not only because you are paid for it. If you receive salary, that's correct. You have to be paid. But it's not only for that, because you believe in that. As an artist that paints a beautiful painting, because he likes that, musician, whatever. So it's crucial to understand, to get people committed, to get involved, to know the community, the streets, their, their common life, where they drink, where pot they go, whatever. That's crucial to understand that in order to see why is, is, I think it's very important. Multidisciplinary and intersectoral approach, I think I don't need to go that. And last but not least, reliable information data section. I will show you uh, three, three graphs of our situation, but it's, it's, it's very important to have that. So last but not least, I said, we created what we call an observatory of violence. Because the problem is so high, we need to keep this analysis on a weekly basis. I don't ask you to create this for a weekly meetings here because the problem is not as big as, as ours. So we have weekly meetings who are invited to the meetings. Only those who have something to offer. Only those who have something to say and this, um, propose. So who are they? Crime scene investigators? Police, academia, never before on the issue of violence, the academia have been invited to participate as a key member, a key role in, in, in the analysis. Coroner offices and review the day certificate. So these people, we call them the technical committee. The technical committee prepares and review information on homicides, traffic crashes, death, suicides, and other and intentional external causes of death. And they go to the major and the municipal security council every week. Not to say that every week the policies are different, but to review how they are going on. Mm. It's kind of a continual uh, research on the situation. Actually, I receive this information every week in my computer. And I, I will show you later a graph with data from about two or three weeks ago. So we, did, we have this every week the analysis and the media, oh my goodness, the media I like duck every week on Tuesday <laughs> to receive information. How many deaths, how many deaths in the last, in the, in the weekend have been reducing? When there is increase, pooch. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see some graphs, not too many, actually only three I think. Cali, the red line, Colombia, the blue line. So we, you can see here, 104, 300, too much, too many. Oh, another anecdote. <laughs> I was invited in, uh, in after this, uh, before going to PAHO, WHO, to a meeting in Argentina. I've been there, uh, we were invited by some friends to go to a neighborhood in which one homicide has occurred in the last six months. One homicide in the last six months, and the community in that area of the neighborhood of, of Buenos Aires was invited, uh, the Minister of Justice, um, I was there, so they invited me to the meeting. My friend who invited me to the meeting said to the people, I use an auditorium like this, this friend of mine, Alberto, come from Colombia for the city, in which there are about 2,000 mortars per year. So I thought, what kind of presentation is this, introduction? If I am there, what is this guy doing here? We have one on his side in the last six months, and this guy is going to teach us what to do when he, in, in, he, in his city, they kill two salsa? My answer, I was my in, internal song. So when I had the opportunity to speak, I told them, you know why is that? Because we started very late. We started very late in Colombia. Hopefully we started someday. But we started very late to tackle this problem with this approach. So we managed to reduce that, you can see there, but it's still quite high, but we started very late. The situation has been worsening 
as I told you before, in the 80s, because of narco trafficking, blah, another peak here, because these problems are not easy to, easy to control continually. Mm -hmm. So that's it. Now Colombia has about 23, 25 per 100,000, and Cali has reduced in, in 2018 to 47, but it's going down again, it's moving to 42. Again, the problem with youth ages, see, 20 to 29 years old, mm -hmm. the highest. Mm -hmm. 30 to 39, second. All of them have been on the way down, all of them. 40, 49, yellow, and the uh, blue one, uh, children 10 to 19 years old. So in this analysis, we know that 90 or 94% or homicides are committed by a man, and the victim is a man. The victim is a man. Number of females that have been killed is also very important, but also fortunately has been declining. But 90 to 94 percent are young people, male, involved in as victims or perpetrators. And now you can have here a problem. I have a problem. Oh, you don't. I have this this red bar here. This is, this is not a rate, this is numbers of killings. Mm. The, homies, the, the, the observatory of violence makes every week calculations to the same week as in the other years. Mm. No, this is not the year before. This is from January 21st, uh, January 1st to July 13th. Same period, all years along. So in the year 2004, over the year before, we have been an increase in that get to this peak. Number of people killing the city in this period was 1,241. Why? In those days, the only explanation we have so far is that in those days, the mayor himself was not doing what he had to do in terms of violence prevention. It was kind of weakness in the program. Rodrigo came back to office, elected second time, second term in 2012. Yeah. Oh, you can see. You can see. At this moment, we are kind of optimistic. The situation is going like that because it's working. The problems are working. So, what are the problems? Another practical thing that I want to share with you. Uh, John mentioned the need to look at risk factors, of course. Risk factors also apply that uh, approach of risk factors also apply to violence, to road trafficking, to road uh, crashes. We say if you drink and drive, you will be at risk of, of, of a crash. But if you don't drink when you're driving, you'll never be involved in a crash, in an alcohol crash related. So that's what we call risk factors. Try to understand the risk factors. So we work with the police and all the law enforcement institutions, the prosecutor, to review data in the, in the, in the, in the observatory, alcohol restrictions. Uh, in Colombia, we call a person like a carrot. When that person is kind of soft, doesn't drink, is kind of nerd. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so when Rodrigo was in office, we decided to create a law called the carrot law. The carrot law, why? To the, the lower the, 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 the time in which the pubs were open and the sales of alcohol. So people said, oh, no, that's boring. That's very boring. We have to drink. No, you have to go to bed. It's 11 p.m. Don't go to, to the pubs at, until <laughs> 1 or 2 or 3 a.m. in the morning. No, go to bed. It's time. You have to work tomorrow. Bye-bye. <laughs> so lead to a little closer of bars. But here you have pubs, ban of carry. Ah, in Colombia it used to be easy to take a, 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 a gun with permit, but you have it in your in your, in, 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 in your uh, garment, whatever, and uh, it was forbidden. And very important, quite crucial, focus on target groups: children, youth, and women. We think. These three groups of people are those who will be targeted 
we want to succeed in some way on violence prevention. Children, I already mentioned the uh, early child development programs. Youth, I will mention some right now, I think. Yes, I'm gonna mention some programs that are currently today. Those I mentioned started in 93, cultural activities, reduction poverty, that all of them. Now, we have early childhood development. Again, I also want to refer, but I like this phrase that a woman mentioned. I did not give birth for them. No parir para la muerte in Spanish. It's very strong in Spanish. You, you speak Spanish, then you can understand better. No parir para la muerte. I didn't give birth to them. It is very important for, for they, the mothers to keep their children alive. For boys and girls, seven to 11 years, peace is my way. And we are now using sports activities as a very important tool for children not to get involved in bad activities. If they are busy, they are tired, they go to bed, and not, or when they arrive home because they are tired. So that's not only because they are tired, but, but because sport activities are very important. Julie Bowling Guns, Summing of Peace, my community is my school. I think it's, it's, it's important. I, I don't know if you have here this kind of names for the programs, mm -hmm. but it's, it's good to, to have this kind of attractive names to the programs. Yeah, you know, my community is my school. It gives a, a sense of belonging between the school and community. Our uh, schools in Colombia, we call it, uh, uh, schools are not only teachers and students. The schools are parents, uh, teachers, uh, children, and the neighborhood in which the school is based. Community leaders also uh, working with community leaders, teachers, parents, for uh, since 2017, building citizenship culture workshops and community reinforcement. In particular, they have been more uh, reinforced after the peace accord with FARC. This program, Collective, is similar to, to English collectives for boys and girls 12, 29 years old. We are not focusing only on boys, we're focusing on both. Mm -hmm. So this is a program that uh, I work with a community groups, NGOs based in the communities. Inclusion and social offering opportunities in collective action. That's what we call it collectivos. It's a collective action. From whom? Uh, NGOs based in neighborhoods. I asked John if here in, in, in UK, in Merseyside, you have or not NGOs from the communities, people who live and have their base and you see the, the, the NGO is based in the communities. This for us has been a good experience to work with NGOs based and live in the communities because they know the people. They know how to interact with them. They know what are their the expectations. They know what they want. I think I'm going too long because people are leaving. <laughs> uh, commitment to work together, ah, they, the, 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 the weird thing was that these NGOs that have been in, in play for 10, 20, 30 years. They know each other but never work together. Mm -hmm. So we managed to put them working together and taking their own uh, strengths to change their strengths and create a program, multiple approach of culture, sport activities, in co-generation, drug use, family, blah, blah, blah. Then, so far, over the last six years, working with 36 NGOs in 42 neighborhoods reached 23,300 uh, boys and girls. All of them, believe me, are now not involved in crime. And that's, for me, it's a very nice reward. No money for that, but good. <laughs> the other problem I want to speak before uh, I end is this program based on a model created by Gary Slotkin, a professor of epidemiology in Illinois. It's called Cure Violence. It's called Violence Interrupted. What is the issue here? Maybe, Mark, you can discuss this. When a crime is committed in a community, one of these interrupters who knows the gang approach them and have a very strong uh, conversation 
and uh, influence on them to stop the spread of violence. Why? Because I kill this guy and he kills me and he kills you. So the chain of crime can be stopped. It's called interrupters. I don't know if here it's possible or not, but it's a very interesting experience. We start, Gary Locken started to develop on that in Illinois, in Chicago, about 10, 15 years ago. And another part of the, of the problem is to get community link involved. More people at risk. So far, how, and this is done today as a research initiative. It's going as a research initiative, intervention research. Two neighborhoods, one with both with a, a recent violent background, in the intervention group, the homicide in 2017 declined for uh, were 11, now in 2018, four. A huge reduction, huge reduction. In the, in, in the, in the control neighborhood, nothing, 28 years. Mm -hmm. So this is approach, I can give you the, 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 the link with, with the contact information with Gary Lockin, maybe you know him, I don't know. But it's, it's, it's important. This this approach is also interesting. The public health approach, he treats this uh, virus as an epidemic. Mm -hmm. Then the, 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 the possibility of getting involved. Yeah. Okay, now I want to finish. So we have to define what problems we are facing. Are we working together or not? We, the, the issue of working together is sometimes difficult, in my experience. I want to work with you and you and you. If you say yes, let's work together. But at the end, each one does what he, think, he or she thinks has to do. Working together means putting our efforts together to do the same at the same time and influencing the same people. Addressing the problem how? Addressing the problem is, maybe I'm repeating that, but I want to stress, addressing the problem is knowing the problem from the very base, from the very start point. Starting to know the problem is crucial to work together. How working together? Yes, we have working together. Our approach is bottom up and top down. Let's go in whatever direction is needed. Let's move to, to, to get this involved. Uh, in the since in Rodrigo took office in the last in, in the last term in 2017, we started a program called Territories of Inclusion and Opportunities, TIOS. In Spanish, is the word for uncles, tios, uncles. So it's, it's funny because it, it caught the attention of the people, tios. So this uh, program was uh, is still in place to face problems in vulnerable neighborhoods who have social health and violence indicators very high and different from others. So after reviewing the situation and the community involvement, we have working together with the involvement of whatever part of the of the municipal whole is involved. Secretary of Health, Secretary of Culture, Secretary of Sporting, Secretary of Infrastructure, all of them are going to the same program as a whole, no each one by side, but by, by, its, own, by its own. Conclusions. Changing our approach for prevention and control has been very, very important. We don't say that stop control. Of course not, never. You have to control it. If I commit a crime, take me to jail, to try and jail. That's true. But prevention is much better than only control. Start as early as possible, no need to repeat. Anal prevention, primary prevention. Don't waste resources in reinventing the wheel. Don't waste resources in reinventing the wheel. And don't see that intuition is good. Intuition is good in some cases, but not in this case. Don't do program by intuition. It's, it's, it's quite bad. Doesn't work. And now, in this book that uh, John Cho, the, the World Report of Health, there are plenty, plenty of documents of evidence-based projects all around the world in developed and in developing countries that show how you can create a program for bioprevention. Have an open mind to explore what is available, evaluate it, keep projects funded, Evaluate all counts, always try to evaluate, not only, not only do, but, uh, and don't quit what is working. That's the problem. We have had a problem here. We have had a problem. Some majors before Rodrigo stop, so the situation worsened. Do we have to live in a violent environment? 
Thank you very much.